Welcome back, my dear light bulbs, to another Black Clover review. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the light bulb army, and also remember to enable notifications to so never miss a video from me again. Now, the light goal for this video, like every video, is 10 likes. So don't forget to hit the like button. Let's get right into the review. Now, this was actually a really good Black Clover episode. So much stuff happened. Now, in the first, be the beginning of the episode, like we got Charmy, Belle arguing, which was hilarious. Belle arguing with Asta because uh, you know smiling when he was talking to Asta, which that was funny and comedic. But my only gripe, my little complaint with that was it felt stretched out a little bit too long. I don't know if I'm the only one that felt like this, but I'm like, okay, this is funny and all, but okay, are, is this going to be the entire episode, just the bickering between them? So that was something that it was funny, but it was kind of stretched out too much in my personal opinion. Now the relationship between Langris and his brother Finrol, I like the interaction, how Finrol Basically, he cares about his friends a lot, the Black Bulls, the people in the Black Bulls, where he told his brother, like, look, you can insult me all you want, but don't insult my friends, don't insult the Black Bulls. So I really like to see that. Fenro, he really, really cares about his friends, especially after all the adventures and all the stuff he went with Asta and stuff, which, um, you know, their bond became stronger. And something surprising was... Seeing Langris, his personality, I, I kind of had a feeling he was going to be like some cocky dude um, because of the flashback we got before of Finn. But this dude is out of control. Now, something really surprising is that he's the vice captain of Golden Dawn at such a young age. That is just baffling to me. That's, that's crazy. Like, he's literally one tier below the captain of Golden Dawn, which is amazing. Now, saying that, we also got to realize that there is uh, a Magic Knight Squad captain that's really young, that looks like he said he's young, maybe not as young as Asa, but he looks like he's 19 or something. So he's really young as well. So he's like a prodigy. So that was interesting to see. Now, the funny thing about Langris and Yuno's interaction towards Zen was that Yuno's like, I'm going to become the Wizard King. But first, I got to become the captain of Golden Dawn. Basically saying, Langris, look, you, you, you like no competition to me. Like, I'm not even looking to take your vice captain position. Like, you're not even there. That was, that pissed off Langris. And that was really hilarious because Langris earlier in the episode, it's talking about, oh, when Yagos came back with the slime and stuff, talking about, oh, well, there got to be honorable sacrifices. You know, we don't want more sacrifices. He literally will have killed civilians. If you know, and the, uh, if Asa and the others were not there, and I'm like, okay, this man is out of control. You could find a different way to defeat Yagos without killing the civilians along the way. So that Langris is not a character I really care about. This man is just too cocky, too arrogant, and he reminds me of Noel's siblings. Like he's just royalty. Like his magic is so great, and he, if you. If you're from the same bloodline as him, like Fenro and stuff, but you have weak magic, he basically sees you as trash. And he also sees the Black Bulls as trash, um, which, hey, his... Hopefully, I just, I just want to see Langris get his butt kicked in a battle so badly, and maybe Fenro saves him or something, where, you know, he actually realizes, okay, my brother's not trash, like, maybe I was too harsh on him. On my big... He, that's his big brother, on his big brother all those years. Now, I was right in saying, in one of my reviews, I was like, when Asa went to the battlefield with his arms are broken, I was like, what is he going to do? Start swinging his sword like Zoro and put his sword in his mouth? He literally, in this episode, put his sword in his mouth and defeated Yagos, which, that was hilarious. I was just thinking, when I saw that, I'm like, okay, I got to talk about this in the review because it literally happened. This man said, okay, I got this. Asa, even without arms could defeat generals. That's hilarious. Even though Yagos was injured prior um, when Langris attacked them. Now, talking about generals, the eight great shining generals. These were the rusty generals of the past. Rusty generals of the past. So basically, that doesn't mean they're super weak or anything. They're still um, Magic Knight Squad Captain level. But... You're telling me that this probably was the low tier, low end generals, which means the new generation of generals, they're going to be on another level. And I saw Mars. Mars in the end, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see him again. 
he's the general in the Diamond Kingdom, and I'm really happy um, to see what they could do. Now, you basically could say that these rusty generals were pawns by these new generals to gather intel because I always forget the old man's name. I think it's like Locust or, or something along those lines. He provided them intel, their magic. So intel collection was the main goal of this attack. It was not to control Kitten and stuff, which would have been a good thing if they controlled it because it's still a strategic um location for the diamond kingdom and it will change the tide of the war between the clover kingdom and the diamond kingdom if the diamond kingdom actually had control of kitten but that was not their objective at the end of the day and obviously i'm not gonna forget to talk about william vengeance true face he's a cursed child that was what he was referred to as he was born with that face that's not even a scar it looks like like his front is all burnt and stuff like his forehead and that's really crazy and he had a tragic backstory a lot of the clover um, black clover characters have like tragic backstories and stuff like that and yeah he's not lich so um he's not the traitor or is he really not i don't know he's not the traitor he was um, blessed with magic he's the illegitimate child of a noble which means a noble had an affair with another woman or whatever it was with an yeah with another woman that was not his wife and he was not he was neglected he was not he couldn't be a noble because uh, he's an illegitimate illegitimate child oh my goodness um and then he got brought out by aristocrats which his step well his adoptive mother abused him which is really messed up and in the end it julia saved and it, it it felt a little bit similar to yami's backstory but yami's backstory wasn't as bad yes he was resented for being a foreigner and stuff but it was not like he was getting abused left and right because he was just kicking everybody's butt that talk um bad about him so yeah this was a really great episode i really enjoyed it um definitely enjoyed william vanden's backstory and you know just putting langris in his place that was hilarious and even bell's interaction even though i felt it lasted a little too long it was a nice episode overall i'm gonna give this episode 8 out of 10 i cannot wait to see what the new generation of generals can do and if you enjoyed this review remember to have a great day peace